Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Raccoon Tycoon. This is a 2-5 to five player commodity speculation set collection auction economic game where you take the role of critters in Astoria during the Gilded Age. You will be producing commodities, selling commodities, purchasing railroads, buying buildings and towns, trying to become the most successful critter in Astoria. How do you become the most successful critter in Astoria and win the game? By having the most victory points at the end of the final round. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in Raccoon Tycoon. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the main game board. Across the top of the main game board, you have the commodity market, which shows the price of each of the commodities, wheat, wood, iron, coal, goods, and luxury. The start player tile, commodity bonus buildings. The title is across the top. The bonus icon is in the top right. The cost is in the bottom right, and the description is in the bottom left. Advanced buildings. The title is at the top, the cost is in the bottom right, and the benefit is across the bottom. Railroad cards. You have the title of the railroad across the top, a picture in the middle. The cost is in the bottom right, and the victory points are in the bottom left. These numbers will be based on how many of that exact railroad you have built. Town cards. The title is across the top. A picture is below the title. Below the picture is the victory points and payer victory points, and the cost is at the bottom. Price and production cards. You would gain commodities depicted in the production, and the commodities listed under price would increase in the commodity market. Commodities, wheat, wood, coal, iron, manufactured goods, and luxuries. Money in 1, 5, 10, 20, and 100. And then finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three-player game, which takes eight steps. Step one, place the main game board in the center of the play area. Step two, place starting pieces. Place a commodity token on each of their corresponding market tracks at the lowest price. Step three, create supply pools. Place the commodities and money next to the game board. Step four, create, shuffle, and place the railroad deck. Based on the number of players, remove a certain number of railroad cards. So for this three-player game, we will remove the Skunk Works and Tycoon Railroads. Then we'll shuffle the remaining and place them on the corresponding space on the game board and draw two face up next to the deck. Step five, place and draw the town deck. Place the town cards face down in ascending order of victory points on the town space on the main board and draw the top card face up. Step six, place and draw building tiles. From the six basic commodity buildings, randomly select four and place them plus one side up on the corresponding spaces on the main board. Remove the other two from the game. Then shuffle the advanced buildings and place them face down on the corresponding space next to the commodity buildings. Step seven, get player components. Shuffle the price and production deck and deal three to each player, then place the remaining next to the board. Then give each player 10 in money. Step eight, choose a first player. Give a player the first player tile and a commodity of their choice. Then going in order, second would get two commodities and third would get three. All of the commodities a player chooses must be different. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of a number of rounds until a final round is triggered. The final round is triggered when the last town card is purchased or the last railroad is auctioned. Then we would finish that round and go to the final scoring. A round. A round consists of player turns, where in player order, players will take one action. There are five possible actions a player can take on their turn. Production, sell a commodity, railroad auction, purchase a building, and purchase a town. Now let's look at each action in detail. Production. You would play a price and production card from your hand, get three of the production commodities from the supply. If you have a cottage industry or factory, this could increase. Then you would increase the commodities in the price section, $1 for each icon. And finally, discard the card face up next to the draw deck and draw a new card. Keep in mind that you can only use one commodity bonus, which is your B symbol, at a time. Also, you can only use one production bonus at a time, which is your P symbol. And players can only have up to 10 commodities. And you can get plus one for each building you own, and a warehouse would give you plus four to that number. Sell a commodity action. You can sell any number of one type of commodity, gaining the money equal to the quantity times the price. Then the price would drop by the number of units sold. Start a railroad auction. You would select a face-up railroad card to auction. The active player would start the auction. The minimum bid is in the bottom right. Players will then increase the bid or pass. When a player passes, they cannot bid again. And then bids would go around and the highest bidder would get the railroad. Keep in mind that if the active player does not win the auction, they get another turn. Purchase a building tile. 
Choose a face up building tile and pay the cost on the tile. Place it in front of you and get that benefit for the rest of the game. Then you would flip the top tile to replace it. For advanced buildings, you can buy the plus one side. Later in the game, you can upgrade by taking the purchase a building tile action again. Purchase a town. This is done with commodity tokens. You can purchase the face up town card by paying the specific tokens in the bottom left or any combination of tokens equal to the bottom right number. You would place the card in front of you and flip over the next town card. Once you've taken one of the five actions, the next player would take their turn and then turns and rounds would continue until either the last town card is purchased or the last railroad is auctioned, triggering the final round. Once that round ends, we would go to the final scoring. The final scoring takes four steps. Step one, score town cards. Step two, score the victory points on railroad cards based on the number owned of that type. Step three, score buildings for one victory point each. And step four, your payers of railroad and town add two victory points each. Once the players tally their total victory points, the player with the most victory points is the most successful critter in Astoria and wins Raccoon Tycoon.